Being born in the 1980s meant that I grew up on classic TV shows like Airwolf and was fed a frequent dose of toxic masculinity in the form of action-packed movies by the likes of Schwarzenegger and Stallone throughout my childhood and teenage years. If there's one thing I always loved it was the huge explosions, crazy weapons and ridiculous set pieces their movies often contained. I always loved helicopters in movies and so whenever I'd see a game with an emphasis on choppers I'd get a woody and just have to play it. So for today's video we're taking a look at the N64 games which are primarily helicopter based and as always if you want a full review of any of today's titles I'll link you up to the full review I've completed in the description box. For today's topic of conversation in the comments section down below, I'd love to know what your favourite movie moment with a helicopter is, or what your favourite chopper game of all time is. For me it's probably Jungle Strike as my old man was addicted to it back in the day and I remember watching him play it for hours on end when I was a kid. Enough of the nostalgia though, let's move on to today's games. Army Men Air Combat is an almost spin-off from the popular N64 series of Army Men games. Developed and published by the 3DO company, Army Men Air Combat was the first of the Army Men series of games to have a 3D engine which generated assets in real time. The basic story of the game is that the ever-present Tan Army are advancing into green territory and naturally it's up to you as Captain William Blade of the Alpha Wolf Squadron to basically put the bad guys in retreat. The game won't ever be winning any awards for its story, but as a game it's actually damn fun to play. You have a choice of four different choppers to choose from, and they do actually feel unique and play very differently, which means that you can get a lot of replayability in the title by going through the game's 16 missions with each of them. With the game's world being so unique, like the core Army Men series of games, you'll be battling in both the plastic world and the real world. This gave the developers a huge amount of scope to create some awesome set piece levels in the game. And although not all of the missions are gold, many are great fun to play. And you do actually get a great sense that the studio had some fun coming up with some of the weird and wonderful settings and ideas. There's also a good mix of mission types. Some are your standard to take down the enemies with all of your weapons, but you also have escort missions and protect style ones which makes the gameplay more diverse. Given the game setting you also have some cool concepts, for example some missions require you to use a helicopter's winch to basically find cool and unique ways to get through the level, so as opposed to just picking up special weapons, one level sees you actually picking up food and dropping it near enemy bases so that the food attracts killer ants and you'll use that to overrun the Tan army. Visually though the game is fairly mediocre. But as a plus point, because it's nowhere near pushing the console to its limits, it does mean that it runs smoothly most of the time. Whilst I would have liked to have seen the visuals bumped up, I think for the time the actual frame rate is much more important for this type of game, especially on the later levels when things do get quite hectic. The game's audio is also fine, and to be honest it's pretty much on par with the rest of the 3DO company's games on Nintendo 64. You get grungy style rock music, voice samples and effects, all of which are low sample rate and sound especially gritty. It's something you just get used to, but it does neither detracting or adds to the game in my opinion. As an added bonus there's also multiplayer options where you can battle each other or as a team go up against AI opponents. And so if you're looking for something a little different, either as a single player or with friends, then this is an easy recommend from me. It's a fairly straightforward game to play, you can polish it off on a weekend and it never outstays its welcome. Knife Edge Nose Gunner is the awkward cousin when it comes to N64 chopper games. The entire list of games here are all third person experiences, but Knife Edge Nose Gunner is a first person on rail shooter. Originally planned to be released with a light gun, this never panned out and so this is the only game like it on the console with perhaps Pokemon Snap being the only relative. Developed and published by Kemco in 1998, the game actually feels quite relevant in the moment because the basic storyline sees the United States creating a space program to allow humans to migrate to Mars. 
After colonising the planet, it soon attracts the unwanted attention of aliens, and so it's up to you to jump in your sci-fi chopper to take them down. Interestingly, whilst the game never did get the promised like an attachment, it is a four-player experience, and so you can play on screen with different reticle colours to really help you play the game, and also there's both primary and secondary weapons, and as you're going to be playing this, you'll also be given hints by the commander who's back at base. What makes the game so weird is that whilst you move on a predetermined path, you do have some degree of movement as you can press the C buttons to move your craft slightly in each direction. You use this in game to dodge incoming attacks, so it does come in handy, but as a whole it's pretty much a fixed path game which requires quick reflex action. Like many of Kemco's other titles of the time, it's not a AAA experience. It received 22 out of 40 from Famitsu in Japan on its release, and the Western reviewers were pretty much in agreement. The graphics are blurry, the sounds are muffled, and the gameplay gets quite repetitive early on. With a light gun, the game would have been more enjoyable, but if you like playing games like House of the Dead with a controller, then you'd probably enjoy this game but for everybody else it's likely to be a play once and be done experience. Perhaps maybe even pushing to play it for a second time with friends, but it's not a game that you're going to be coming back to again and again. Nuclear Strike, like the name suggests, is an entry into the 90s classic series of strike games, and in my humble opinion, it's the best of the series. Strangely, I owned and completed this game on the PlayStation 1 back in 1997, and I vividly remember my dad picking it up day one because he'd been such a huge fan of the Strike series on the Sega Mega Drive, and that he was really excited to see this title and to see how it would play. Now, nobody ever expected an N64 port to arrive, especially two to three years later, depending on your region, but I think it's fair to say this one was worth the wait. Naturally, the PlayStation 1 version has better audio, it has full motion video, that was axed from the N64 release, but in the time between releases, the Nintendo 64 version received a graphical upgrade, and with the expansion pack enhancements, it is a very decent looking and playing game. I was surprised that some reviewers of the time criticised the storyline, as I actually feel this is one of the game's strongest elements as you battle across a fictional Asian country against a spy who's defected and turned into a warlord and is now in possession of a nuclear weapon. I love the fact that the game has over a dozen playable craft, and the main helicopter being a fictional Super Apache really gave the game a modern feel, not only on its release back in the day but also even to the current. In terms of gameplay however, this really will come down to personal opinions and taste. It's fair to say that if you've played any of the Strike series, you'll instantly feel at home here, as the game really doesn't do anything to make it stand out in that department. Another department which stood out for me though was the game's audio, which does have a great level of polish to it. Now sure it doesn't sound as crisp as the CD-based PlayStation, but for the N64 the sound is surprisingly good. The game also features dynamic audio, and so as you enter a more heavily armoured area, or go into a bigger battle, the audio ramps up. But when you're flying around more quiet parts of the mission, it calms down. This really adds to the immersive feel of the game, because when you start hearing that music start ramping up, you know things are about to get real. If you're a fan of the Strike series and enjoy it, then I can't see why you wouldn't like Nuclear Strike. But if you've played any of the earlier entries and not found them to be your cup of tea, then nothing really here is going to be changing your opinion. A follow-up was planned and even scheduled to be released on Nintendo 64 called Future Strike and was set to be a more sci-fi inspired title. But that was later scrapped and the elements were worked into Future Cop LAPD, which never saw an N64 release. Nuclear Strike is probably my favourite of the games on this list. With it being a single player experience, it's one which you can really get stuck into and I doubt you'd be completing it in a hurry, with some of the later levels being really challenging to play. Wrapping up today's rundown comes Chopper Attack, perhaps the least known of today's games, and as you can guess that's probably for a good reason. Known and released as Wild Choppers in Japan in 1997, this SATA developed game was received quite well in Japan and garnered a respectable 30 out of 40 from Famitsu. Originally planned with a two-player mode, the game was first shown at trade shows in 1996 
and was shown as being an action-packed arcade game which was great fun to play. SATA were looking for a developer for the game in the West and they really struggled to garner much interest. In the US, the rights were picked up by Midway who felt that the game's arcade-like gameplay would be a perfect fit for what they were releasing on the console. The problem was they already had a packed schedule and so they told SATA it wouldn't be published until mid-1998. The same too applied when it came to a European publisher with GT Interactive picking it up and lining it up for a September 1998 release. With a few extra months now available to give SATA credit, they didn't just change the language and ship it off to store shelves. The studio spent time making some additional gameplay tweaks to the game to address some of the criticisms the Japanese reviewers had highlighted. Whilst the changes didn't ultimately make this a must-own title, it's perhaps the easiest to pick up and play for gamers on this list as one of the biggest changes is that you can move the chopper now with the C buttons for a very Turok-like feel to its control system if you prefer this to the more arcade-like default setup. SATA decided to keep the game's texture quality low to help keep a consistent frame rate and no matter how many enemies are on screen things never seem to slow down. But the overall frame rate in the game is low anyway and so you get more of a sense of action than speed with this one. It does come across a little too slow overall and I would have loved to have seen it run a bit faster. There's no multiplayer mode which I think the game would have really benefited from and even the cancelled two player mode would have helped stretch some more life out of the title which is ultimately a fairly run of the mill albeit enjoyable at times game. The music is a little weird in my opinion as it would be more fitting in a western game but at least they tried something different than your run-of-the-mill 90s rock music for games. I also quite like the chopper designs and like Army Men Air Combat, they do all feel unique to play and all have different styles. It's a game which you can polish off start to finish in one afternoon sitting. There's a tutorial mode to help you get to grips with the game and its controls and it doesn't throw anything expected at you when playing. That is, aside from the fact that John effing Rambo makes an appearance as an enemy and even jumps and hangs off your chopper to attack you, meaning you have to shake him off to kill him before it's too late. Chopper attack is a weird one. For this game I'd probably still recommend playing it simply because it's quite a short experience, but you shouldn't go out of your way to pick this one up unless you're really keen on what you've seen. Is it enjoyable? Yes, but it's definitely not a must play or own title. And so there you have it, there's your rundown on the N64's chopper based titles. Sure I could have included added experiences such as Pilot Wings Gyrocopter to this list, but I wanted to focus more on the core helicopter games for today, and so let me know of, of any other chopper experiences you remember on the N64 when playing other titles. As always, thanks for watching, and until next time.